telescopic magnets range in price from $4 up to around $60, and those rolling magnetic sweepers range in price from $50 to almost $200. So let's get the testing underway and see which is the best. In the first test, we'll see which telescopic magnet has the most lift. Then we'll see which one offers the best shielding. We'll see which tool has the strongest shaft. Then we'll see which rolling magnetic sweeper can pick up the most metal. At a price of only $4, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Pittsburgh and sold at Harbor Freight. It claims to have a 15 pound capacity. We're going to test that. Extending from 7.5 inches to over 29 and a half. The Pittsburgh is made in China and the Pittsburgh weighs 84 grams. Let's test the maximum lift for each of the magnets and let's see if any of them can lift this 42 pound steel plate. And the Pittsburgh performed better than advertised at 21.29 pounds. At a price of $8 is this N-Bar brand. It claims it can lift 20 pounds. Extends from 7 to 30 inches. The N-Bar is made in China. The N-Bar weighs 84 grams and the N-Bar is rated for 20 pounds and it performed better than the Pittsburgh at 29.47 pounds. At a price of $10 is this Cap OD brand. It claims the magnetic head offers 30 pounds of magnetic strength. Collapse length is 7 inches. The extended length is 30.25. Magnetic shield prevents attaching to metal surfaces. Made in China. 92 grams for the Cap OD. And the Cap OD is rated for 30 pounds of pull, but it only made it to 25.23 pounds. At a price of $11 is this No Cry brand. The stainless steel body extends up to 30 inches. They claim 25 pounds of pull force. The No Cry is made in China. The No Cry weighs 88 grams. The No Cry claims 25 pounds of pull force, but it ran out of steam at 19.33 pounds. At a price of $13 is this Craftsman brand. Extends up to 31 and a half inches. Magnetic tip lifts up to 6 pounds. It even includes an LED light. Made in China. 74 grams for the Craftsman. And a Craftsman only claimed 6 pounds of lift, but it did more than twice as well as advertised at 13.82. At a price of $16 is this Omen brand. Goblet shaped head pushes flux to top of magnet. Sides will not attach to unwanted metal surfaces. Telescopes from 8 and a quarter to 30 and a quarter inches. The Omen is made in USA. And the Omen weighs 98 grams. The Omen is rated for 16 pounds of lift and it did better than advertised at 19.19 pounds. At a price of $19 is this gear wrench brand. Extends up to 33 and a quarter inches. Lifts up to 5 pounds. Includes a non-slip cushion grip. Made in China. The gear wrench is very light at 46 grams. And the gear wrench only claims 5 pounds of lift but it held on until 7.17 pounds. At a price of $23 is this Blue Point brand which is sold by Snap-on. Extends up to 32 and 3 quarter inches. LED light for illuminating dark areas. The magnetic head has 8 pounds of lift and shields the sides from attaching to unwanted metal surfaces. 50 grams for the Blue Point. The Blue Point advertises 8 pounds of lift and it did better than advertised at just over 9 pounds. At a price of $24 is this Magmate brand. Powerful permanent rare earth magnet. The holding capacity is 5 pounds. Telescopic retriever with swivel head. The Magmate is made in USA. 70 grams for the Magmate. And the Magmate only claims 5 pounds of holding capacity but it almost made it to 17 pounds. At a price of $25 is this Klein Tools brand. Includes an LED light. Extends up to 22 inches. The magnetic head lifts up to 2 pounds. Includes a flex shaft at the end of the tool. Klein Tools is made in China. The Klein Tools weighs 202 grams. And the Klein Tools only claims 2 pounds of lift and it more than quadrupled the claim at just over 9 pounds. At a price of $32 is this Matco Tools brand. Goblet shaped head shields sides of magnet from attaching to unwanted metal surfaces. Extends up to 30.25 inches. Lifts up to 16 pounds. The Matco Tools weighs 96 grams. And the Matco claims 16 pounds of lift and exceeded expectations at just over 21 pounds. At a price of $34 is this Easy Red brand. Rated to lift 18 pounds. 1 inch pickup magnet. Telescopes to 38 inches. Includes an insulated handle. The Easy Red is made in China. 168 grams for the Easy Red. Most of the brands have exceeded their rating, but the Easy Red came up about 2.5 pounds short of its rating at 15.65 pounds. At a price of $34 is this Mac Tools brand. Rated for lifting up to 10 pounds. The power cap gives more lifting power and shields the sides of magnet from attaching to unwanted surfaces. They claim that the telescopic shaft is strong, long, and lightweight. The Mac Tools is made in USA. The Mac Tools weighs 70 grams. And the Mac Tools only claims 10 pounds of lift and it did better than advertised at 11.53. At a price of $55 is this Proto brand. Rated for 16 pounds of lift. The sides of the magnet are shielded. The Proto is made in USA. 94 grams for the Proto. And the Proto has a 16 pound lift rating and it performed about the same as the Omen at 18.34. If it's all about magnet strength, the $8 N-Bar did the best at over 29 pounds. Cap OD performed well at 25.23, Pittsburgh 21.29, and Matco Tools 21.17 pounds. Magnet size can be a big factor in accessing a tight space and the Blue Point Magnet has a smallest diameter at 0.5 inches. Gear wrench and Magmate are also pretty compact at 0.6. 6.3 inches. The length of a tool is another factor to consider and the Easy Red is the longest at 
37 inches. MagMig 34.5 and gear wrench 33.5 inches. If you're trying to pick up a runaway nut or bolt, an unshielded magnet can really make things challenging. So let's see which magnet offers the best shielding. And the Pittsburgh shielding just isn't doing a very good job at 68.43 grams. And the N bar really struggled at almost 259 grams or about 190 grams more than the Pittsburgh. And the Cap OD performed the best yet at just about 59 grams. And the No Cry shielding could use some improvement at almost 110 grams. And the Craftsman offers the best shielding yet at only 14.88 grams. And the Omen offers twice the magnetic pull as the Craftsman and is still performed very well at just under 30 grams. And the Gear Wrench has just over 7 pounds of magnetic pull and it performed the best yet on this test at 1.29 grams. Very impressive. And the very narrow profile of the Blue Point really hurt it on this test at just under 44 grams. And the Magmate shielding is about the same as the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh at just over 69 grams. And the Klein Tool struggled even more than the Yen Bar at just over 309 grams. And the Mako Tools not only looks like the Ullman, it performed like it too at 29.8 grams. And the Easy Red maxed out the scale at over 500 grams, the most yet. And the Mac Tools performed very well at just under 24 grams, which is good enough to move into the third position. And the Proto performed about the same as the Ullman and the Mako Tools at 28.18 grams. If you want a magnet with good shielding, the Gear Wrench came out on top at 1.29 grams. Craftsman finished in second at 14.88 and Mac Tools 23.98 grams. It just seems to make sense that a stronger magnet will have more bleed through. So taking into account count both the magnetic pull and the bleed through in forming a ratio, the gear wrench came in on top at 0.000397 pounds of bleed through per pound of direct magnetic pull. Craftsman finished in second, Mac Tools, Proto, Matco, and Ullman also performed very well. If you're trying to retrieve a runaway nut or bolt through a metal filled obstacle course, a wobbly tool can really add to the challenge. At very close to 24 inches from the vise and without anything attached to the Pittsburgh, the tip of the magnet is drooping about an inch and three sixteenths. And that's quite a bit of sag. Adding 100 grams to the magnet, the Pittsburgh is now sagging 2.75 inches. And the N-Bar performed better than the Pittsburgh at an inch and an eighth. With the extra 100 grams, the N-Bar performed a lot better at an inch and nine sixteenths, which is over an inch better than the Pittsburgh. And the Cap OD is at about an inch and an eighth without any weight added to the magnet. With 100 grams, the Cap OD is at two and a quarter inches. And the No Cry is about the same as the N-Bar and the Cap OD at an inch and an eighth. With 100 grams, the N-Bar is at 2.25 inches, the same as the Cap OD. And the Craftsman has quite a bit of sag at 1.38 inches, the most yet. With 100 grams, the Craftsman is sagging just about as much as the Pittsburgh at 2.75 inches. And the Ullman is by far the best yet at about a quarter of an inch. With 100 grams of weight, the Ullman is under an inch to take the lead from the end bar. Without a metal passenger, the lightweight gear wrench performed very well at just under an inch. And very close to two and five eighths of an inch with 100 grams of weight. The Blue Point has about a quarter inch of sag fully extended. With the extra 100 grams of weight, 1.63 inches is pretty good for a narrow profile magnet. Just under a half inch of sag with the Magmate. And one inch with 100 grams is good enough to move into second place behind the Ullman. Just under a half inch of sag with the Klein tools. With the extra 100 grams added, just under an inch and a half. Very close to 11 sixteenths for the Matco tools. With 100 grams, the Matco is an inch and a quarter, which is good enough to move into third place behind the Magmate. And the Easy Red is very robust, and there's pretty much no sag with the Easy Red. With 100 grams, the Easy Red dropped by about 3 sixteenths of an inch to move into the lead. Just like the Easy Red, the Mac tools isn't sagging without a passenger on board. With 100 grams, very close to 5 eighths of an inch, which is good enough to move into second place behind the Easy Red. And the Proto performed very close to the same as the Matco at 0 0.68 inches. Inches. And with the extra 100 grams, 1.25 inches, the same as the Matco. If you're trying to direct the magnet through an engine bay obstacle course, the Easy Red and the Mac tools have the least amount of wobble or sag. The Ullman performed very well at 0.19 inches and Blue Point 0.25. The Easy Red did the best at 0.19 inches with 100 grams of weight. Mac tools is a much smaller diameter and performed very well at 0.63 inches. Before we move on to rolling magnetic sweepers, let's see which magnet offers the most lift from the side. And the Pittsburgh's telescopic shaft was pushed to the limit. And the magnet let go at 1.86 pounds. And the end bar shaft seems quite a bit stronger than the Pittsburgh, and the magnet performed better at 2.32 pounds. And the Cap OD gave up a little bit early at 1.23 pounds. And the No Cry performed almost as well as the Pittsburgh at 1.71 pounds. And the Craftsman's magnet is quite a bit less powerful than the previous brands, and it let go at 0.83 pounds. And the Ullman made it to 2.04 pounds, which is good enough to move into second place behind the end bar. Even though the gear wrench is pretty compact, it still performed well at 1.73 pounds. And the Blue Point has the smallest diameter in the lineup and it let go at 0.96 pounds. And the Magmate moves into the lead over the end bar at 2.35 pounds. And the Klein Tools performed about the same as the Ullman at 2.07 pounds. And the Matco performed about the same as the Klein Tools at 2.05. And Easy Red moves into the lead over the Magmate at 3.47 pounds. And once again, the Mac Tools performed very well at 2.64 pounds, which is good enough to move into second place behind the Easy Red. And the Proto also performed very well at 2.3 pounds.
pounds. After testing all the brands, the Easy Red came out on top at 3.48 pounds. Mac Tools finished in second at 2.65, Magmate 2.36, and Nbar 2.33 pounds. In addition to testing telescopic magnets, let's also test the rolling magnetic sweepers. At a price of $50, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is Central Machinery, which is sold at Harbor Freight. 30-inch sweeper with wheels. The handle extends from 30 to 44 and a half inches. It claims to work on hard surfaces and low carpets. 50 pounds of magnetic pull. One pull release quickly clears debris from the sweeper. Made in China. And essential machinery weighs 17 pounds. Let's compare the magnetic pull on this steel plate. All of the magnetic sweepers are in the lowest position to maximize magnetic pull. I've zeroed the scale with essential machinery on the scale. And it's right at 6 pounds of lift for the central machinery. At a price of $67 is this Tuffum brand, 24 inches wide with a 30 pound capacity. The telescopic handle varies from 30 to 46 inches, designed to be used on grass, carpet, and concrete floor. The Tuffum is made in China, and the Tuffum's very light at only 13 pounds. Unfortunately, the Tuffum really struggled in this test at just one pound of lift. At a price of $73 is this Tool Whiz brand. The sweeper has a 24 inch width. It claims to offer a 33 pound capacity, made in China, and the Tool Whiz weighs 13 pounds. And the Tool Whiz moves into second place behind the central machinery at four pounds of lift. At a price of $75 is this Grip brand, 30 inch wide magnetic floor sweeper. Collects up to 50 pounds of ferrous materials, 17 pounds for the Grip, and the Grip made it to eight pounds of lift to take first place from the central machinery. At a price of $85 is this 36 inch Nico sweeper. Extendable handle reaches from 29 to 42 inches. Wheels have adjustable clearance space that ranges from three quarter to one and a half inches. The Nico is made in China, and the Nico weighs 18 pounds. And the Nico moves into second place behind the Grip at seven pounds of lift. At $189, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Master Magnetics. It claims to be more effective than a push broom. Six inch wheels and a 48 inch handle. It claims to offer 400 pounds of pull. The wheels are much heavier duty with metal construction as well as bearings. And the Master Magnetics is almost twice as heavy as the competition at 36 pounds. And the Master Magnetics is adjustable on the go with around four pounds of lift with the nose parallel to the ground. With the nose in a downward position, about 17 pounds of lift. So the Master Magnetics came out on top at 17 pounds of lift. The grip finished in second place at eight and Nico seven pounds. The bucket and washers together weigh around 26 pounds. I'll go ahead and remove the large washer to give every magnetic sweeper a fair chance to pick up as much as possible. I'll zero the weight scale before testing each of the sweepers. After rolling the sweepers across the metal, I'll go ahead and gather as much metal as possible. And the central machinery left behind quite a bit of unfinished business, but it did pick up seven pounds of washers. No problem letting go of the metal. And the Tuffum has six inches less width than the central machinery. And the Tuffum picked up four pounds of washers or about three pounds less than the central machinery. No problem letting go of the metal. With the name like Tool Whiz, I'm expecting a big number. And the Tool Whiz performed about the same as the Tuffum at 4 pounds. So the central machinery is still in the lead at 7 pounds. And the grip has a little stronger magnetic pull than the central machinery, but it's the same size at 30 inches. And the grip performed very close to the same as the central machinery at 7 pounds. And the Nico is 36 inches wide or 6 inches wider than the central machinery in the grip. And the Nico performed the same as the central machinery in the grip at 7 pounds. No problem letting go of the metal. And the Master Magnetics is only 24 inches wide, but it has about twice the length as the other sweepers. And the Master Magnetics moves into the lead at 8 pounds. All of the sweepers did a great job of releasing the metal. So the Master Magnetics came out on top at 8 pounds. Central Machinery, Grip, and Nico finished in a three-way tie for second place at 7 pounds. So which magnet is the best? And the Mac Tools came out on top with an average finish at fourth place. The Magmate, Omen, Proto, and Maco all finished very close together between 5.2 and 5.7. When you consider both price and performance, the Central Machinery definitely seems like the way to go for around $50. I like the Master Magnetics, but it is pretty expensive at a price of around $200. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.